we meet again, dear fans of World of Warships Sea Smackdown. In this new episode, you'll behold damage in the hundreds of thousands, dozens of ships sunk, and the impressive feats of our captains. The star of today's episode is Nisenau. She embodies trademark German quality with her mighty guns, sturdy armor, and ferocious torpedoes. This battleship was made to rush forward at groups of ships and come out on top. Don't believe it? Then watch a couple of highlights to warm up. How can you deal more than 120,000 damage in a minute? The answer to that question is well known to player Eldar 7370, who had managed to deal just 10,000 damage during the first eight minutes of this battle. Our hero decided that simply wouldn't do, and rushed toward a group of three battleships, made up of Sinop, Prince Heinrich, and Francesca Caracciolo. Torpedoes plus main and secondary guns did their job. Despite our hero going down to meet the mermaids, they managed to sink two battleships out of three. The second player at the helm of the battleship, the Wonder Over Yonder, was no coward at all, and prepared for their final concert in this battle. And it was a high-profile audience that gathered for the show. Twin sister Nisenel, multi-barreled Fuso, and the most dangerous of all, destroyer Isashio. For starters, our protagonist performed their main torpedo hit song, Top From Both Sides. The first battleship was so impressed that she sung along all the way back home to port. But Fuso requested an encore. For our battleship, any requests from her fans are law, so she performed a small armor-piercing piece from her new album, especially for the Japanese ship. By the time Isashio came out of the smoke, our hero was performing the secondary battery ballad. How dangerous it is to stay close to German battleships. Bravo, maestro. We'll come back to this artist later. For now, the warm-up is over. And we're moving to the main stage of today's Sea Smackdown episode. The Player Iron Division decided not to stick to the there's no place like home rule. That's why our Nisenau set out in the direction of key area A from the right flank. This is a wise tactic because you can open fire along the way and arrive at the key area right as the party is getting started. That's what happened here. Our battleship landed a crushing blow on Königsberg for the first blood achievement. And she sent armor-piercing shells directly into Duke of York's Citadel. 50,000 damage was the first suggestion that this battle was heading in the right direction. The only thing that slightly spoiled the mood was the approaching cyclone. In this direction, we had four of our team's ships versus four opponents. An equal meeting of forces. We'll try to nab the key area. It's important right now because the red team got hold of their own key area ages ago. Our opponents didn't take kindly to our showing up, and all four ships opened fire at our Nisenau. Phew, our propellers barely got us away from that rain of shells. The cyclone is inbound, so we won't see anything further than eight kilometers away very soon. There are still four red team ships on the flank, and only three ships from our team. New Orleans is already back at the port, and Dallas has decided to capture the key area all by herself. It seems that only Nelson and us are prepared to repel the red team's fleet. We'll find out whether our protagonist manages to accomplish that or not immediately after the maximum damage nomination. In this nomination, we have player The Wonder Over Yonder. That's right, it's the player who performed that wonderful concert for their three devoted fans. 
This new battle takes place on two brothers. Our battleship player felt right at home on this map. It's no shocker because our protagonist was supported by a large allied force on the flank. Having played the role of first violin, our hero managed to deal over a hundred thousand damage and obtain the Confederate achievement within the first ten minutes of the battle. It might seem that all they had left to do was head to the Red Team's base and grab it. However, the opponents that had come from the other flanks stormed into our base. We need to get back. On her way back to the base, our Nizer now finished off a battleship utilizing her secondary guns and obtained the high caliber achievement. Our hero confidently took care of the intruder on board Bayern and rushed to chase after fleeing shores and Colorado. Sinking the latter two ships and winning the battle was a mere formality. Thanks to their skillful gameplay and the 214,000 damage inflicted, our hero wins the maximum damage nomination. They scored the best result among all players who sent us their replays during update 0.11.0. Our congratulations to the winner. Now, let's return to the neighbor's map. The raging cyclone reduced visibility to 8 kilometers. If the red team wins on this flank, it's highly likely that we'll lose this battle. Francesco Caracciolo was the first to make her appearance, and she began actively firing at Nelson. That's great. It means we have a chance to get closer and treat the Italian ship to some torpedo spaghetti. Leander appeared to the starboard and started ripping pretty sizable chunks from our HP pool with her armor-piercing shells. It's nice that we've upgraded our secondary battery. We scared off the troublesome cruiser pretty quickly. Now we can focus on the Italian ship. She's clever, and she makes wise maneuvers. She knows about our torpedoes. It's fine. We've seen stronger opponents. The German ship makes a fake turn as if she were launching torpedoes. Francesco Caracciola reacts, but there are no torpedoes in the water. Too early. A few more moments. Now, try to evade that. Three torpedoes wasn't enough for the Italian to go down, and she managed to fire a salvo at Nelson just before she fell under the fire of our main guns. At the same time, the British ship took hits from the bombs of an aircraft carrier and shells from the newly arrived Prince Heinrich. It's still just us against the German ship, Colorado and lurking Leander. Neisenau is approaching Prince Heinrich. In the heat of the battle, our hero didn't notice that they had been left without their starboard torpedo launcher. Well, we need to turn to Prince Heinrich's port side then. Apparently, this is the final fight. The opponent is also ready for a torpedo duel. Both battleships are within reach of each other's main batteries. Colorado starts firing as well. Nizer now launches a torpedo salvo, drops her speed, and abruptly turns the steering wheel in the direction of Prince Heinrich. This specific maneuver saved our hero from a hit, while the German ship suffered the same fate as the Italian battleship and went down to Poseidon's domain. That's the third frag. The only remaining torpedo launcher is reloading. There are no more repair party charges left, and Colorado is definitely planning to ram us. A couple more moments, and this battle will be over for us. We'll find out whether our hero survives in this situation or not immediately after the Maximum Ship Sunk nomination. The beginning of this battle in the Epicenter mode was quite an action-packed one for player Wolfsgrim. Utilizing a tried and tested formula of armor piercing and secondary battery injections, our hero entirely depleted the HP pool of Duke of York. The protagonist sent two cruisers back to the port with two armor piercing punctures to their citadels. The first was Furutaka, and the second was an unlucky Shores. She assisted her ally New York in firing at Congo and Belfast, and was awarded with the Honorable High Caliber Medal. Another Confederate award and the fourth destroyed ribbon were granted to our hero after their skillful shot at Prince Heinrich. But the festival of awards didn't end there, all thanks to two destroyers that decided to ambush our Nizenau near an island. Out of two battleship hunters, they turned into a devastating strike, Kraken unleashed, and double strike. 
At the end of the battle, our hero sank Podvoisky, and if it weren't for the allied New Mexico, Nisenau could even have scored the eighth frag. By the way, that potential eighth frag, French Jaguar, launched torpedoes just before her demise, and they hit the side of the German ship. Alas, the battle eventually ended with a defeat. Nevertheless, Wolfsgrim scored seven frags, got seven achievements, dealt 195,000 damage, and earned almost 2,000 base XP before her defeat. That's excellent. Dear viewers, keep in mind that in order to become a winner in the Maximum Ship Sunk nomination, you need to both demonstrate a high score of ships destroyed and also play a great and spectacular battle. Nisenau accomplished that perfectly. We're back again on the neighbor's map. As you might recall, Colorado intended to ram our Nisenau. The US battleship definitely wanted to quickly send the rampaging German ship back to the port. However, Colorado didn't consider one thing. Our hero isn't just a fine shooter. They are also adept at controlling the virtual steering wheel of their battleship. The German ship turns the wheel and avoids a collision by mere meters. The startled capital ship wasn't able to even turn her guns in amazement. But her secondary battery is wide awake and sets us on fire. Damage control party is recharging and all charges of repair party have already been exhausted. Our torpedoes have just reloaded and we send them to follow the retreating ships. It's a hit and a flooding instance. An aircraft carrier has been spotted nearby. We fire a salvo at her. Hey, just five over penetrations. We're left with just slightly less than 8,000 HP. We need to finish Colorado off fast. She can disappear within the cyclone and heal her wounds with repair party. And we won't be able to overpower if she does. Attack aircraft are charging. They missed. A desperate armor-piercing salvo. That's it. The fourth frag. Now we need to sink the carrier fast. Torpedo bombers incoming. It wasn't the best drop, but the torpedoes still force us to stop capturing key area A. We fire another salvo at the aircraft carrier. The result is three over penetrations and a poor 3,000 damage. That's one lucky ship. At the center of the map, Leander sinks our allied Leon. Are we going to lose this battle? We'll soon find out whether our hero will cope with Ryujo with just a few fragments of her HP left or not. Until then, here is a brief guide on how to fight against aircraft carriers by another Nisenau, helmed by player Merlin43. In the battle, being left all alone at their direction, the battleship player had to resist two aircraft carriers at once, Implacable and Vaser. Wise maneuvers, decent speed, and AA defenses helped Nisenau cope with the aerial drops and sink some ships. The result is 54 destroyed aircraft. It's the highest score among all the players who sent their replays for the current Sea Smackdown show. And what about our hero from the main battle of today's episode? Will they manage to sink the stubborn Japanese ship? The bombers are having a go. Anti-aircraft guns open fire. It's the AA Defense Expert Medal, but it's too early to celebrate just yet. A bomb hits our hero, leaves the ship with 2,700 HP, and breaks their propulsion. Damage control party is activated. A single random fire on board now would be guaranteed to deliver us to the port. But our hero doesn't think about that. Another salvo at Ryujo, this time with high explosive shells. No luck. The aircraft leaves us with just 1,200 HP. Nisenau is desperately turning to launch a torpedo spread. Both ships approach very close to each other. The carrier's secondary battery now also opens fire. Only 927 HP left. Another shot from the main guns. The carrier has just 800 HP. And our secondary guns finish her off. Phew, it's a victory.
The Cyclone turned the raid for Key Area A into a big fight for our hero. Iron Division all alone stopped the Red Team's forces and allowed our team to emerge victorious in that battle. The player scored almost 230,000 damage, 8 well-deserved medals, 5 ships sunk, 2,820 base XP, and the honorable best battle achievement in this Sea Smackdown episode. All players whose replays were featured in this episode will receive worthy rewards. And we're waiting for your replays, my dear friends, for our next episode. Don't forget, the rules on how to get on our show can be found in a special article on our website.